And a good day, everyone. Moon here with you on Saturday, June 29th, 2013. Can you believe it? It's been six months today since my mother passed away. Time's really going by, isn't it? Okay, today I want to talk about two comets. You've heard me talk about them again, for those of you who have uh, been following my work. Of course, 2012 S1 Ison, and this particular comet, 2P Inca. 2P Inca, as you can see right here. And for those of you who think that I am not pronouncing this correctly, we'll get that out of the way. Inca. Inca. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm not going to read all of this stuff to you. I will just point out a few things. Now, Comet 2P Inca, it's a periodic comet. It completes an orbit of the sun once every three years, the shortest known period of any known comet. And it was first recorded back in 1786, but was not recognized as a periodic comet until 1819, when its orbit was computed by John Franz Inca. Like Halley's Comet, it is unusual in being named after the calculator of its orbit, rather than the one who discovered it. Okay, now the last perihelion was back in 2010, August 6th. The next one coming up, November 21st, 2013. November 21st, 2013. Long, many, 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 many months ago, they thought it was, It looked like it might happen on the 25th, but it's going to be the 21st. Now, I'm not, like I say, I'm not going to read all this stuff to you. I will post links. You can go check it out for yourself. It's got many other names that's been given it throughout all this long time that it's been discovered. The diameter of the nucleus is 4.8 km. And comets are in unstable orbits that evolve over time due to the uh, perturbations and outgassing. Now, given Inca's low orbital inclination near the ecliptic and the brief orbital period of three years, the orbit of Inca is frequently perturbed by the inner planets. Okay? Now, this is just little movies and stuff. Like I say, I'll do it again. Now, comet Inca is believed to be the originator of several related meteor showers known as the torrids, which are encountered as the northern and southern torrids across November and the beta torrids in late June and early July. So keep that in mind. If you see a meteorite shower, you're going to know what's causing it. But not only is this comet known for a meteorite shower, some believe that it has even had a greater effect here on Earth, sending something else. Check this out. Now, there's more than one theory associated with Inca's comet and impacts of commentary material on Earth, and everybody remembers this. The Tunguska event of 1908, probably caused by the impact of a commentary body, has also been postulated as a fragment of Comet Inca. Okay? So, you know, we don't know what these things may bring. Let's hop over here to the JPL right quick while we're on this particular comet. Okay, November 21st, as we can see right here, 2013. That's just an next perihelium closest to the sun. We've got it here. Let's mark it on down and go by our... And you can see closest to the sun here before we start is 0.337 AU. But I do believe it will probably get down. This is the lowest it will get. 0.336 AU, which in miles, if you wanted to count, do all the calculations, it comes out in miles as 31,233,100 two miles from the sun. So now that we've got this out of the way, let's go check out and see where C2012 S1 Ison is going to be on this particular day. And now we're over here, of course, on NASA's JPL small body database browser to uh, C2012 S1 Ison. I've already got it set for November 21st, 2013. 
and the closest distance to the sun. Now, please keep in mind, I'm not talking about how close anything is to Earth. I'm talking about where they will be in reference to distance to the sun. Okay? All right, here we go. I've already got it calculated down and run it up hour by hour. There's Comet Ison. There's Mercury. All right. Closest as it gets on that day for Ison is 0 0.384 AU. Well, if you go and you calculate that down to miles, that equals 35,695,030 miles. That's what it comes out to be. Okay, remember, keep this little picture in your mind now. Here's Mercury. Here's Ison. And when we go back over to 2P Inca, all right, there's Mercury. There is the comet. Ison is right about here. Let's check it out again and make sure. Yeah, just up above that. It's right about here. So, you can see both of these are just going to be within a few million miles from the sun. Okay? I think that this will be very interesting to see if Earth does have any strange fireballs, meteors, anything like that to happen. And I'm not just going on the 21st of November. I'm going to say from the 21st through at least the 25th or 26th. Probably cutoff date would be midnight the 26th or midnight the 25th, somewhere in that area, okay? And this, is, this does not mean that we're going to get hit with a big meteorite. This is just something I'm watching to make comparisons to see if anything does happen. So, you know, you folks can do your own homework. Help me out with this. I'd appreciate any help I can get on it. I, I find it quite interesting that they're both going to be just within a few million miles of the sun coming up at this time. This week of November and the rest of the 2013 year should be very interesting. So folks, I wanted to point this stuff out to you. Something to uh, check out. Doesn't mean we're going to get hit with a big meteorite. I am not saying that. I am saying there could possibly be an uptick in fireballs and meteors. Not asteroids. Okay? Meteors that we might see. We just got to wait and see. And then again, we might not even see a meteorite shower from this. I mean, you know, who knows? We don't know. But keep your eyes on it, and I will keep my eyes on it. And if I see anything develop, I'll be sure and let you know. For the most part, peace, love, blessings. Be safe, and always keep the faith. Thanks for watching. Moon.